Hello and welcome to this latest installment of Tropical Medicine. Today we are going to talk about lung flukes. We will first discuss the etiology, epidemiology, and transmission of lung flukes, and then move on to the diagnosis, management, and preventative measures surrounding lung flukes. The medical name for lung flukes is Paragonimus westermani. Let us begin with a list of 10 questions to begin your thinking on this topic. We will return to these questions at the end of the module to see what you have learned. Question number one. What is the organism that causes the majority of lung fluke cases? Question number two. What are the major risk factors for lung flukes? Question number three. What is the typical clinical presentation of early infection? Question number four. What is a typical clinical presentation in late infection? Question number five. What are differential diagnoses for the presentation of lung flukes? Question number six. How are lung flukes diagnosed? Question number seven. How are lung flukes usually treated? Question number eight. How can one prevent getting infected with lung flukes? Question number nine, where is perigonomyosis most common? And question number 10, why are lung flukes not transmitted from person to person? Let's begin with the etiology. Perigonomus westermani is the most common cause of lung flukes, though there are 16 species of perigonomus that can cause disease in humans. The life cycle of lung flukes is intricate and complex. Infection begins when humans ingest infected crab meat. The larvae hatch in the small intestine of the human, and the immature flukes travel to the lung parenchyma where they mature into adults. In the lungs, the flukes produce eggs which enter into the bronchioles. These eggs can then be coughed up and or swallowed. Eggs that exit the human host in feces or sputum may hatch in fresh water and become mericidia. Mericidia can then infect snails, which are the first intermediate host. The mericidia mature within the snail and become cercariae. Cercariae can then invade crustaceans, including crab and crawfish. Crustaceans serve as the second intermediate host. Lung flukes are endemic to East Asia and India. Cases of lung flukes in the United States are typically found in immigrant populations from endemic areas. Risk factors for developing lung flukes include eating raw or undercooked freshwater crabs or crawfish. The red regions on this map indicate areas endemic to lung flukes. It takes anywhere from 2 to 20 days following ingestion of raw crab meat to present with symptoms. However, most infections are asymptomatic. Symptomatic cases may initially present similar to chronic bronchitis or active tuberculosis. There are two phases of lung fluke infection, early and late. In addition, lung flukes can migrate from the lungs and cause infection elsewhere this is called extrapulmonary paragonomyosis. Early phase infection describes the stage from the onset infection to the production of the first egg in the human host. Symptoms of early phase infection include fever, malaise, diarrhea, epigastric pain, and chest pain. Sputum samples may or may not be blood tinged. On histology, peripheral eosinophilia is present. Late infection defines the stage at which mature flukes are present in the lungs. Symptoms of late infection include hemoptysis and absence of fever. Tests in labs will show eggs and sputum samples and absence of peripheral eosinophilia. Diagnosis of lung flukes is made by using microscopy, serology, imaging, and a careful patient history. Microscopy shows eggs and sputum during late infections, Biopsies may show lung fluke eggs or adults, and if cerebral infection is present, lumbar puncture will show bloody CSF and eosinophilia. ELISA testing is also available. On imaging during early infection, one can see pleural effusion or pneumothorax. Late infection may show cysts, linear lesions, ring-shaped opacities, and parenchymal masses. 
Careful patient history should include travel history, diet, and place of origin. Tuberculosis should remain on the differential. Keep in mind that an acid fat stain destroys lung fluke eggs. Treatment of lung flukes is typically a short course of praziquantel, with cure rates of nearly 100%. In some countries, triclobendazole may be used instead. However, this latter option is not currently approved by the FDA for this indication in the United States. For cerebral infection, corticosteroids may be administered in addition to praziquantel. While treatment is fairly straightforward, prevention is the most important measure in regards to this disease. The main preventative measures include avoiding consumption of raw or undercooked crabs and crawfish, especially in endemic areas. Crustaceans must be cooked to a minimum temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, which is an equivalent of 63 degrees Celsius. Let us discuss a typical clinical scenario of lung flukes. A 25-year-old woman presents with a six-month history of hemoptysis. She recently emigrated from India. She denies fevers, chills, night sweats, and unintentional weight loss. A chest x-ray is performed and shows ring-shaped opacities. Laboratory serologies show an eosinophil count of 2,500 with a normal being 0 to 300. An acid fast on sputum smear is negative for mycoplasma tuberculosis. Let us turn back to the questions we started the module with. Question number one. What is the organism that causes the majority of lung fluke cases? The answer is Paragonimus westermani. Question number two. What are the major risk factors for lung flukes? The answer, consuming raw or undercooked crawfish or crabs infected with Paragonimus larvae. Question number three. What is a typical clinical presentation in early infection? The answer, fever, malaise, diarrhea, epigastric pain, chest pain with peripheral eosinophilia. Question number four. What is a typical clinical presentation in late infection? This includes hemoptysis with eggs in sputum. Question number five. What are differential diagnoses for the presentation of lung flukes? The answer is chronic bronchitis and tuberculosis. Question number six, how are lung flukes diagnosed? The answer, identification of eggs or adults along with characteristic findings on imaging and serology. Question number seven, how are lung flukes usually treated? The answer is with praziquantel. Question number eight, how can one prevent getting infected with lung flukes? The answer is to cook crustaceans to a minimum of 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Question number nine. Where is paragonomyosis most common? The answer is in Asia and India. Question number 10. Why are lung flukes not transmitted from person to person? And the answer here is that lung fluke eggs must hatch in fresh water, preventing person to person direct transmission. And this concludes our module on paragonomyosis. Thank you so much for your attention.